Universe 10 IDE Under the Hood, Part 4 of 6 Architecture View Containment. So we know that one editor is implemented using one controller and a whole bunch of views. Yeah, this is a view, this is a view, this is a view, all responsible for their own specific uh, view on the data. So how did we, every view is implemented using a single component, a form component. So how is that implemented? How is it possible that we see all those forms simultaneously within one big window? Let's talk about that. So we have the controller and its views. Let's have a look. So typical, what we see is that those views have uh, different sizes. We have big views, smaller views. Yeah. And then we notice that all those views have different, different parts of data. They show different kinds of information, different views on the data. And we have um, uh, another kind of view that basically allows to contain the other views. We use in those views the split bar to manage some of the real estate and within there there are only form container widgets that allow the containment of the, the, the views that contain the edit boxes, the buttons and the tab strips and the grids and all that kind of stuff. Now, these views it, uh, we call data views and this kind of view we call container views. And in the Uniface 10 IDE architecture, we only make a distinction between those, these two type of views. So we have container views and we have data views. The container views are implemented using regular form components. Yeah, available already available in 9.6. Yeah, with the split bars and the form container widget. If you never had a look at the form container widget, I suggest. You're going to have a look at it because it allows you a lot of um, uh, flexibility in building rich uh, data heavy uh, user interfaces. The data forms are implemented using a new component type, the HTML form, which will be available in version 10. I will talk about the HTML form a bit later. For now, let's have a concrete um, um, look at how the IDE makes use of this form container and using the form container builds up its, its whole window content. So it starts with a big window here. That big window is divided into three areas. The header area, a footer area and a center area or a body area. In those areas there is only one widget. That's a form container widget. And that's it. The rest of the form is empty. This is, this is the only thing that it contains. Now within the, uh, the, 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 the header, we contain a second compo component. And that component then shows all the widgets and other data elements like tab strips, U bar, search boxes and that kind of stuff. Something similar we do here at the footer. But here in the center, we need more re um, real estate management. We need more flexibility in what kind of information we show in a specific context. So this container form, uh, this form container widget contains a form that again only contains um, other form containers. So this is one is split up again in two areas using a split bar. Both areas only contain a form container. Here at the top, the form container contains another form that manages a another top tab strip and some buttons. And at this form container, we need again more ma uh, layout management. So we contain a form that on itself uses split bars to manage more real estate with more form containers and then Finally, at this stage, and we're now sort of at the sixth level of, of containment, we see now here um, that it contains the actual data views that make up uh, what you see in the IDE. 
this kind of con form containment uh, mechanism allows us to uh, uh, several things. It allows us to break up a big window into smaller pieces so that one piece is, 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 is easier to maintain, it's easier to program. Yeah, so it also allows us um, reuse. Yeah, we see here a grid, um, um, and, and uh, this grid is capable of showing columns as a tree. And actually, if you're looking at this one, the property inspector, we also see a grip, a grid. Okay, it has only two columns, but again, the first column has a kind of indentation, so it looks a bit like a tree. Yeah, but and even if you go to the toolbox, yeah, this is also just a grid with only one column, and again, that one column is shown as a, as a tree. So we call this component the tree grid, and it's used to implement this part, this part, and this part. So you already see here in one single window that we are reusing a component in different areas. Well, it's even better than that. If we switch to this tab, we again see the same tree grid component. It's, it's, a, it's a different instance. Yeah? We insti instantiate it again. It shows different data, but it is again the same component. If we go to the right script, we see the same component here again. This one is a different one, obviously, but this one is again the same component. Once we have done those two, it will show the same components. So this kind of containment mechanism allows us um, uh, a lot of reuse of different um, uh, of, of, of single component implementations. But also, as you see me doing it already a, a couple of times, it allows us to, to plug, plug in, depending on the content, to plug in different kind of instances. If I switch, for example, between these two tabs, we are just plugging in a different instance of a component. The first time that component will be instantiated for that specific context, and the next time when you click on it, it will be just uh, contained again. Yeah. So by clicking it, we are uncontaining and containing those contained forms, yeah, but we keep them in memory so they are stateful and we don't have to build them up again. Yeah, stateful allows us to um, uh, it saves us a lot of code to main to be uh, that will restore the state uh, once it is gets instantiated and, and on the other hand um, um, uh, it becomes therefore a lot faster. It is even better than that if you look at what we see here at the header. It's not a tree grid, obviously. It's a tab strip and it has some other widgets in there, like uh, buttons and menus. If we're now going to look at this strip, of which we now know that it, it is its own separate component, it actually also has a tab strip and some buttons and menus. If you're actually looking at this thing, it is also actually also a tab strip with a menu and some buttons. Same here. Yeah. So, well, I. I I, I think you, you will guess it by now. Again, that is the same component that we're reusing at different locations in the user interface. So this is the same component as this component. It's the same component as this component, the same component as this component, the same component as this component, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. Okay, they don't look always the same. We don't use always everything that we need. Yeah, in this one we only see a tab strip and we don't see any input controls for 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 um, uh, for the search boxes or whatever. But eventually, it is the same component and we're just hiding a couple of fields. So using this whole containment mechanism, um, it the the reuse of components is that efficient that we eventually ended up with only two components. And that is, um, so what you see here on the screen, you only see two components. A component that handles tree and grid functionality and a component that handles uh, tab strips, buttons, menus, and input controls. And that's it. So this view containment brings us a couple of things. It allows us to break up large, most of the time, therefore, complex windows. Yeah, in version 9, 
a form was one-on-one -on -one connected to a window. Using the container widget, uh, a form does not have to have its own window. It can be part of another form and that form then um, has the window. Yeah, So it allows us, us to break up large windows in smaller pieces. Therefore, it allows us to isolate parts of the user interface that are similar in behavior. And therefore, you can reuse those kind of parts in the user interface. Yeah, so better reuse. It also allows us to dynamically exchange those pieces of behavior, yeah, depending on the context, you just contain and uncontain parts of the user interface. Basically, this mechanism looks very much like the tab widget that we are already uh, familiar uh, with as of uh, version 7, I think. Um, but the implementation is, is slightly different that um, uh, you can see the container widget as a separation. Yeah? That we have split up the tab widget into two parts. parts yeah? We have uh, disconnected the tab strip from the container part. And now we are delivering the container part as a separate widget, uh, allowing you to um, uh, use it in a more flexible way. In Next, let's have a closer look at the data views. The grids, the trees, the input controls, the tab strips and all that kind of stuff. 